Hey everyone, welcome to Sunday night soul time. I hope that oh, you're navigating these times okay. I know that these continue to be really challenging times and I want to point out for the last two weeks, there's been just some resources shared, whether it's really having compassion for the different fear that's showing up or otherwise, I really encourage you to, to spend some time with that. Um, last week about vulnerability, um, there was some stuff shared as well. And I just really encourage you to really leverage the resources because these times are not easy. And with that, what I want to talk about is a dark night of the soul. So what I'm, I mean, collectively very much, we're going through a dark night of the soul, but I'm really witnessing it. And so many of the women that I work with, um, and just people in my life and those around me. So if you got called to this, <laughs> um, if something was speaking to you really good chance that you might be experiencing a dark night of the soul. So what is a dark night of the soul? A dark night of the soul is in a really essential part of it precedes a massive shift in consciousness. Um, it precedes a shift to you stepping into deeper alignment with your true self to really, um, operating from a higher state of being and of presence. And it's a painful process and period to go through. Um, sometimes it can last a year. Uh, I've had a few, um, that have, um, lasted, <laughs> For a while at different points in my life um or sometimes it can be you know a month or just an experience so don't get too much hung on the time what i would encourage you to think about is what it feels like it can feel like you're having whiplash in your life you it's it's it feels like a lot of extreme up and downs and the reason for that is that it's a kind of all at once um shift in perception where a lot of things that used to give you meaning no longer have meaning. And you start to feel disconnected um, from things that once used to give you energy or give you life. And so it can feel like this, you know, in between worlds is kind of how you feel. You're neither here nor there, where you feel disconnected from a lot of things and things just feel meaningless. And at the same time, what's being happening is um, you are shifting. And so things that used to light you up just all of a sudden feel dull or heavy or weigh you down. And um, a lot is revealed to you too, all for your highest good, all for your highest benefit in the name of, you know, we're all, we're here to evolve. We're always moving forward. You know, universe is progressive and so are we. We are constantly expanding, constantly growing. Um, we are here to disconnect from our fear-based self and anchor in our higher self. Like that's called ascension. That's called awakening. That's also called evolution, depending on what lens of perception you're looking at this through and the words that you're choosing to descri describe it. But we're all doing the same thing. And so sometimes a dark night of soul can be something really, you know, um, horrible or tragic happens in your life, death of a loved one. But it can also just be a lot of, it can be more muted than that. And just all of a sudden, you know, you go through a period where, oh my God, I used to love this job. I hate my job. I don't want to be in this relationship. These friends are no longer lifting me up. And what happens is because it's a lot to take in at once, you, you just feel like this kind of, like we're always doing this, but it starts to feel like this. And one day you feel like good about things and the next you're like, oh my God, you know, it's just these kind of despair. And that's you just energetically reacting to the shifts in perception that are actually happening for you. And it's a lot for this conscious mind to take in at once. And so um, a lot of the identities that we've carried um, get surrendered through this process. They no longer serve us. Like, and I don't even just mean identity, like the traditional ones, like mom or executive woman. I just mean like you know, um, the energies we've embodied, like oh, always being the nice girl or the people pleaser or this or that, like these ways of being and these masks and these things that we've clung on to become very painful and heavy as well. So it's like all of this happens at once. It's usually across multiple areas of our life and multiple ways of being in the ways that we've shown up. 
and that's why it's usually over an extended time period. Um, you know, obviously for me getting sober, I've had a, a couple of those and that was very much like dramatic things in my life, but then I've, I've had more muted ones where it was, um, this kind of whiplash, like oh, just going down and clearing out stuff that didn't work anymore, um, uh, over longer than a year extended period of time. Um, so I'm, I'm sharing this because, um, it, it collectively we're very much going through a dark night of the soul and many of us individually are because these are awakening times and it's important for each of us we are going through a massive shift in our own consciousness and then shifting collective consciousness so universe is really pushing us to go within and really looks often sometimes in a painful way of what no, is no longer serving and that happens via we just start to feel dull we start to feel things don't have meaning we feel in between worlds but what's actually happening is that you're being shown a lot and it's an opportunity for you to elevate yourself and also heal stuff that is unhealed so with that, I want to share, if you're identifying with this at all, I want to share with you three ways to navigate a dark night of the soul. And again, I would say if you're guided here, it's probably for a reason. Okay. And so the first is, um, I'm looking at my notes. Here. Yes. <laughs> Be willing to feel. In fact, this is not a time to go, oh, I need to switch and get in a positive mindset and get my way out of this. No. Feeling is how we release. And so when you're going through a dark night of the soul, a lot of feelings will come up. You might be feeling stuff from your past and not in conscious awareness. That's what's going on. If you're having the connection, great, but it's really a time to just allow feelings to move through you. And so what's coming up, it's like witness those feelings. If you need to cry, if you need to feel angry, like just allow it, like surrender in it and I'll actually allow it to move out of you. Feelings are sacred. Feelings is how we actually move dense energy out and through our bodies as well. So be willing to feel, do not avoid your feelings during this time. Instead, make time and space to feel it's like, you know, make it your job to feel. And I'm not talking about like taking out feelings on others or any of that unhealthy toxicity. I am saying create a sacred, beautiful space where, you know, you sit time to feel, to be with your feelings, acknowledge your feelings and allow them the beauty of actually moving through you. You know, what you don't want to do is be with the feelings and then attach thoughts to the feelings and spiral on doomsday. I'm not saying that I'm saying like in a sacred, healthy way, just witness the feelings, feel your feelings, allow them to move through you. You don't need to spiral in your feelings. And if you want more suggestions on how to do this, send me a note, email me, and I will provide you any help and guidance I can. Number two is be willing to see the truth. So when you're in a dark night of a soul, a lot is being shown to you about your life, what no longer works, patterns that no longer serve relationships that don't serve ways of being that don't serve. Look, we all, we all went through it a bit with COVID even like this busyness. I mean, that was the big collective lesson, uh, was so toxic and unhealthy. Like we just can't go back. Right. And that might be what's coming up in your dark and night soul right now. You might be pushing to go back and you just can't or something like that. But it's, um, it's also like, you know, dis, um, disempowering yourself, um, you know, uh, addiction, that can be a real thing. But anyway, so you're being shown a lot. So be willing to see and acknowledge the truth of what's being shown. You know, again, it's nothing to be afraid of. You're being shown what no longer serves so that you can heal it. So I would say be willing to assume you're being shown a lot of truths about you, truths that if you heal and release, you'll feel more freer, more alive, more joy, more bliss than you ever have before, but you've got to move through it. You know, dark night of the soul is very much the only way is through. You got to feel, you got to be willing to see the truth and acknowledge the truths and, and be okay with it. It's, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's the necessary step to rebirthing a new you, the old must die. Okay. And then that's why I have on the third thing here is the third and final thing is be willing to surrender all that no longer serves. It's such a blind leap of faith in the dark night of the soul. So if you're feeling, you're willing to see the truth, and then you're ready to let go of things that don't longer serve. And you might not know what's next. This is very much a letting go 
sometimes before you even know what's next or what's going to come and replace that. It is like a blind trust, leap of faith, um, be willing to be a fool for God kind of energy about it. So be willing to shed these layers, be willing to surrender them, be willing to let go of them. That is how you break free because what comes after the dark night of soul is a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of embodiment, um, higher happiness and joy than you can imagine. And I believe that's collectively what's happening for us right now too. But the only thing you have control over is you doing your work and you're doing your work is if you're going through a dark night soul to do these three practices, to be in it, as you shift your own consciousness, you shift the consciousness of the world. Because look, is there anything we've learned in these past two years? We are all connected deeply, whether we like it or not. So really show up in your own healing right now. Be really ready. You know, you know, it is not selfish to focus on your own healing right now. It is not selfish to focus shifting yourself just to impact those around you, those in your own community. This is some of the most powerful work you can do, but deeply surrender into it and just be willing. So again, feel, be willing to see the truth, be willing to surrender what no longer serves, even if you don't know what comes next. That's all I got for you now. If you want any questions or any support, even any reading materials about this, don't hesitate to ping me. And then I hope you'll join me on my podcast tomorrow. I have Sarah Grace McCandless coming on. She's an author. She's just incredible. And she's going to, she's been doing a little dark night of the soul. She has really been navigating a lot of change in her life. And uh, it's a live coaching podcast. So she's going to be coming on to share some of her current struggles. So tune in that tomorrow. Um, it'll probably be really helpful on this topic as well. And you can always call into the show live. 816-251-3555 at 1 p.m. Pacific at unityonlineradio.org. That's it for now. Have a beautiful week, everyone. And I'm here if you need anything. See you, see you next time.